It's ripped 30% of my scalp clean off. Because the scalp had actually come off completely, it's not a situation where you can just stick it back on and, and stitch it on, it, it won't take. Pierre Winberg is a marine systems ecologist and a world expert in phycology, the study of seaweed. She left the University of Wollongong five years ago to begin an innovation journey that has dramatically changed her life. She's now producing dried seaweed and seaweed extract for food and medical products. But as a pioneer in the field, she had to build her production line from scratch. Um, and so we had to piece together lots of things like uh, soup kettles, uh, meat mincers, wine presses, even membrane filtrations that they use in the dairy industry um, and work out, oh, this does work. We can, we can join this size one to that size one and get the process flowing. Last February, Pierre Winberg was almost killed in an horrific industrial accident while working alone at the factory. I had my cap on, I had my hair tied back, I had my safety glasses and hearing protection in, but somehow on this um, pump and the drive shaft in here, which is shielded, a thread of hair has somehow come out the back of my cap and caught around the drive shaft. Uh, and I have no memory of it, but it's ripped my 30% of my scalp clean off. What followed was a dramatic bid to save her life first and then her scalp. She'd lost about two and a half litres of blood at the scene before paramedics stabilised her. She was flown by rescue helicopter to St George Hospital in Sydney. She um, came to us um, sort of mid-morning, um, transferred straight to the operating theatre as soon as she arrived. Uh, and then we started uh, looking for blood vessels. Because the scalp had actually come off completely, it's not a situation where you can just stick it back on and, and stitch it on. It, it won't take. It, it needs to have sufficient blood going into it and sufficient blood coming out of it to keep it alive. In a six-hour operation, plastic surgeon Adrian Sharif and his team tried to reattach Pierre Winberg's scalp, but in the end, they could not. The damage to the inside of those blood vessels is such that we were pretty much on a hiding to nothing to get that, uh, that piece of scalp uh, revascularised. And, and that's when we had to sort of um, change tack and, and put a skin graft on. Now seven months later, Pia Winberg is having more surgery to try to grow skin back on her bare scalp. Her overwhelming feeling is gratitude for the people who saved her, for the healthcare system, and to be able to continue her life's work. I've experienced being close to death now and it, and I, and it was you know, a pretty calm event. So I, I don't feel stressed about it at all. And just lucky to be able to move on. I guess I'm, yeah, I was always passionate about what I do. Now I feel like, yeah, this is a, one of the hurdles of my innovation journey, which is unfortunate, but I'm very motivated just to continue on now. Has it changed you? Um, it's probably changed me that I don't sweat the small stuff anymore about what are the important things in life, the bigger picture journey of why I'm growing seaweed, where it comes from in the sustainability sense and where it's going to helping people in medical um, applications. Um, that's just been reinforced as the focus and what's really important. Ironically, the native Australian green seaweed has properties that mimic human tissue. It has huge potential for wound healing, printing new skin with 3D technology and aiding stem cell transfer. This means that human skin cells, when we're printing it in our new seaweed inks, they recognise it, they actually anchor the cells to the material and start to grow and produce collagen um, and all of the things they need to create new tissue. Um, and this is really exciting because we can be a part of the world of new wound healing research and new biomaterials that are doing amazing things because the technology around the 3D printing and cell printing, it's there. They were actually just missing a few really good inks and here we come along with this ink and can suddenly unlock a, a whole area of wound healing. Because I was looking at wound healing 
with the research colleagues at the University of Wollongong um, in a theoretical academic context, you know, I was starting to understand how the wound healing process works. But then when it's actually happened to you, um, it, it means even more. Yeah, it's about 50% protein in that seaweed and we farm it so we can maintain that protein in our farm seaweed. And it's got all the essential amino acids and vitamin B12. So if you're on a low meat diet, um, you can get most of what you're missing. Pia Winberg continues to preach the virtues of seaweed at events such as Sydney's Winter Wonderland Whole Food Market. This is a whole food market, so the yeah. people here are more conscious of what they're eating. Yeah. How do you bring seaweed to the masses, though? That is hard, and um, that's why we started to put it into foods like you know pasta and corn chips that are eaten every day. And people, even the masses, are starting to pick that up and understand it. Um, but of course, emerging as a new industry, we have to go with the people that get the message and will spread the message. Um, and that's the people that are at the Whole Foods markets. They understand what we're talking about. They're tuned in, they're doing their own research online. Um, and they, they will be the people that educate the masses in the long run. Now with production systems and products in place, Pierre Winberg is impatient for Australians to embrace seaweed for all its benefits. Next year the farm will relocate to fields near the derelict Australian paper mill at Bolong in New South Wales, using all of Manildra's ethanol waste streams. The production factory will be upgraded to process up to 3,000 tonnes of seaweed a year. Yes, I'm impatient for it to actually happen because it feels like it's a no-brainer. Look how much product we're growing, look how many nutritional applications there are, look at how many sustainability and health applications there are. The only thing I'm limited in is time, so I really want to move forward fast now and um, start developing this as an industry, employ people here in the region in sustainable technologies um, and get to market with some solutions that can really help the world. Thank you.